Hey everyone, welcome to Young Adults. We are so thankful that you're joining us. If this is your first time with us, my name is Gabriel and I have the privilege and the honor to serve as a young adult pastor here at Christ Fellowship. And I wanna give a shout out to all those that may be watching, whether you're online or one of our campuses, downtown, Doral, maybe you're at West Kendall, Palmetto Bay or Redland. Thank you for joining us. We're so thankful that you're here. You've uh, joined us at a great time because we're starting a brand new series series that we've entitled A Psalm for Every Situation. We as people, as young adults, we navigate through different seasons, emotions, and situations in our life, whether it may be fear, whether it may be a season of loneliness, or sometimes shame, or guilt, or anger, frustration, but we can go back to God's Word, and they can show us how to navigate through that situation according to His principles and commands. And so today, I'm so excited. We're going to pick up and actually start in Psalm chapter 46. So if you're not standing, I'm going to ask that you stand at all of our campuses. Psalm chapter 46, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. So excited about this series and this message. I hope that it blesses you. This is what God's word says. It's going to come up on the screen. It says, God is, can you say God is? At all of our campuses, say God is. Yeah, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not, what's that next word? Oh, come on, say it like you mean it, we will not. Yeah, fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountain tremble at its swelling. God's word encourages us to not be fearful, to not have fear in our hearts. But the question is how? There's so many things that happen around us in our life. Well, we're gonna find out. But first, I would love all of us just to quickly bow our heads and close our eyes for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful, Lord, that we get to come to this place, that we get to hear your word together as a church, as a ministry, as young adults. And Father, I pray for every young man, every young leader, every young woman that may be listening to this message right now. Father, I pray that you would open up our minds Open up our hearts, Father. I pray if there's some of us that are here struggling with fear in different areas of our lives, Father, I pray that after today, that not only would we be inspired by your word, but encouraged in it, Lord, that we would understand that your promises and your words are true and we can take it to the bank, Father, that we serve a God that is in control of all things. And Lord, yes, in this world, we will have trouble. There will be things, but we can take heart because Jesus, you have overcome the world. And so, Father, I pray that you would ease our minds and our hearts, that we would allow the enemy to distract us, and, Father, that we would zero in on what your word and your truth has for us today. We love you, God, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, the church said, amen, amen. You guys can go ahead and take a seat. Well, I want to start today by asking all of us a quick little question. I want you to go back to when you were a kid, all right? Think when you were a kid, let's, let's pick, like, maybe like late elementary, maybe early middle school. What was your biggest fear? Think about it. What was your biggest fear? Maybe uh, you were afraid of the dark, right? You were afraid of that creature, the creatures lurking under your bed or maybe in your closet. Like what was your biggest fear? Maybe in middle school, one of your biggest fears was just maybe, I don't know, having a bathroom accident in front of your friends. I don't know, peeing your pants or something happening right at lunchtime or recess. What was your biggest fear? You know, some of us, we have different fears or maybe they might be similar when we're kids, but let's fast forward a little bit. How about now? We are young adults, right? We're anywhere from 18 to 29 in this ministry. What are your fears now? Maybe your fear is you have a fear of failing. Maybe your fear is of losing someone that you love. Maybe you have a fear that health might take a turn in your life for someone that you love. Maybe the uncertainties of life have you fearful. Maybe it's a financial fear. What is your biggest fear now? You see, we live in a world that many people and those around us, they have so much fear. 
We live in a world that there is fear with uh, who's going to be now in government and in politics. There's fears with our finances. There's fear with our health. There's, there's, full, uh, there's, there's a world full of fears everywhere that we look. And there's fear here. There's fear there. But can I tell you and remind you that as children of God, as children of life, we are not called to live in fear. We're called to live in faith. As children of God, we need to be reminded that in this world, there is going to be situations and things that are going to maybe knock us on our feet, knock us off of our feet, but the reality is, is that we serve an almighty and powerful God, that you don't have to fear tomorrow, that tomorrow's going to have its own troubles, but we can rest assured in the one that holds tomorrow, and that is God Almighty. As children of God, we're not called to live and to walk in fear, but to walk in faith, understanding that God is in control of all things. We need to understand, and in this world, we will have trouble, but we can take heart because Christ has overcome the world. Can we say amen to that today? We can remember all who God is, all what that he has done, and all that he will do in our lives. We need to remember who is the God that we serve. Because when we remember who God is, can I tell you, we won't fear. Matter of fact, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down as today's, uh, the title of tonight's message. Remember so you won't fear. Remember so you won't fear. The question is, what is it that we should remember, right? And how will remembering something or someone not allow us to be in fear? Well, we're going to find out as we dive into Psalm 46 tonight. If you're taking notes, I have three things that as children of God, as followers of Jesus, we should remember so we won't fear. Actually, write this down as the first thing that you should remember. The first thing you should remember is remember the presence of God. Remember the presence of God. Look at what it says in, in verse chapter, in chapter 46, verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not, what's the next word? Yeah, we will not fear though the earth gives way. In other words, when struggling with fear, when going through difficult and scary moments, we need to remind ourselves what? That God is near. That God is present. That God is with you. That he will never leave you nor forsake you. Anybody say amen to that today? Let me give you a little bit of context of what's going on in this passage because scholars believe that King David is the writer here. And King David is actually navigating through a very difficult season in his life. And the first line of this psalm that the writer is reminding himself and wanting to remind us, God's people, is that God is our refuge and strength. And if you have your Bibles or you're taking notes, I want you to circle that word is, and I want you to underline refuge and strength. What the Bible, God's word is telling us is that God is refuge and God is strength. In other words, again, this is who God is. He is these things. He is refuge and he is strength. But how specifically in the context of this passage? You see, God himself was a place of refuge for the nation of Israel. They were fugitives and they were running. And so God put them in, in this place and uh, the cities around to protect them, to be refuge for them. God himself was the nation of Israel's strength for his people. He was being strong for them, but also he was being strong in them. Did you guys get that? God alone was the psalmist and, and the people of Israel. God alone was their refuge and their strength. And, and here's what you have to understand and I need to clarify. The word of God says God is, not God and something else is. It's not God in finances, God in your relationship, God in the politics, God in this. No, God alone is our refuge and strength. Not God in our certainty about, you know, things going on in work or things going on in school or in our career. God alone is our refuge and strength. And later on, what, what, what we can see is that God himself was their help. And the reality is, is that God wasn't helping them from a distance. God was a very present help. Matter of fact, let's go back to the passage. It says again, God is our refuge and strength. And then my, one of my favorite parts is a very present help in trouble. 
a very present help in trouble. I want you to underline, circle, like put, I don't know, screenshot it, whatever you need to do. But I want you to circle there, very present help. Because what a beautiful imagery and understanding and just reminder that God is a present God. God is not a distant God. God is not a busy God. God is not a God so preoccupied with all the things going on in the world that he is not present in your life. In other words, I thank God that he is not like me. That I have all these things going on in my life, whether it's my family, ministry, or, or my, little, little, my little business on the side. And, and I'm like, oh my gosh, and I can't be present in all places. And so some things fall through the cracks and some people don't feel heard or seen by me. Some people don't feel shepherded by me. And, and I fail people time and time again. But thanks be to God that he's not like you and like me. God is present Right now, he's at Redland. Right now, he's at Doral. He's at downtown. He's at West Kendall. He's in Palmetto Bay. He's with you watching online. God is present right here, right now. And so next time, young man, young lady, that you start to feel fearful of the things going on in life, be reminded of God's presence in your life. Remember the presence of God. No matter what you go through or maybe are currently going through right now, remember God's presence is always with you. The word of God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And the reason that we can have God's presence in our life is because of Jesus. Because of what Jesus did for you and for me 2,000 years ago on the cross. But before Jesus, let me explain something to you. Before even Jesus came, God was also present with these people. Matter of fact, we see um, in the Old and New Testament, right? In the Old Testament, there was multiple ways that God manifested his presence or showed his presence to his people. Let me, let me give you just two examples, right? Um, to the nation of Israel, when the Israelites were going through the desert, God manifested his presence or showed that he was with his people during the day. There was a big pillar. It was a cloud. And what this cloud provided in the middle of a desert, right, was shade, was refuge, was shelter, was protection from the sun and from the elements. And God was present that way. And by night, it was a pillar of fire. And what this fire provided was light was guidance, was warmth, was also protection from the things around them. And this is one of the ways that God showed that he was present with his people. Another way in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, was through the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was God's visible way to show and remind God's people that he was always going to be with his people. That he was always going to be with them wherever they went, wherever this Ark was, God was right there with his people. But if you fast forward and now the beauty of the gospel, the good news about Jesus is that God wanted to be even more intimate with these people. So he sent his son Jesus to live, to die and to be risen on the third day for you and for me. So that if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, scripture says that not only will we be saved, which is more than enough, but then we will be sealed by his promised Holy Spirit. That now the presence of God, listen, listen, it resides within us forever and ever. We are now the temple of the Spirit. The Spirit of God, the presence of God now resides with you and with me wherever we go. And young adult, when we remember this, when we remember that God is always with us, can I tell you, it should encourage the living daylights out of, the, uh, out of us. It should give us a confidence to understand that, listen, in this world, we're going to go through things. We're going to navigate through health problems, financial and relationships and, and the world and, and global war, whatever you want to say. We're going to navigate through things in our life, but the presence of God should give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. His presence brings peace for God's people. God is a good and present father and there should be nothing more comforting to us, his kids, to know that he is always with us. Can I get an amen to that? Today, his presence brings us peace and that should dismantle fear in our lives. It actually reminds me of, of my own kids. See, my own kids, they're my kids, okay? 
And so my kids are complete extroverts. <laughs> Make no mistake, they are little, but they are extroverts. They love meeting new people and they love talking. And, and you know, their kids, is, they're super cute, but... Uh, also make no mistake that even though they're extroverts, there are times where they can be intimidated by their environments. Whether it's a, a, a new park that we take them to or whether it's people that they just don't really know, they, they are kind of shy in the beginning and so they will walk slowly to the new kids around. They'll walk slowly into that new park and, and when I start to see this, or Lauren and I, right, their parent, mom and dad, we start to see this, we want them to know, hey, you're, you're all right. Like, you're good. We're right here. And so what we'll start to do is we'll start to move closer and closer to Emma and to Lucas. And and when they turn around and they see that mom and dad are there, that we are close, can I tell you, it's like a boost of confidence for them. They're like, man, my parents, I'm I'm good. Mom and dad are here. If anything happens, mom's here, dad's here, I'm good. And so you can even just see it in in their eyes, in the way that they act, in their demeanor, that they just get this boost of confidence knowing that mom and dad are near And if my kids can feel that about broken and messed up mom and dad, can I tell you, can I ask you something? How much more or what should it do to us as children of God, as his kids to know that our heavenly father is not just a father that's in heaven, but he is with us wherever we go? What kind of confidence should it give us? What boots should it give us in our life? Matter of fact, there's this quote. I want you to hear it. It says, the secret of the confidence is the consciousness of the nearness of God. Let me say that one more time. The secret of the confidence is the consciousness of the nearness of God. What is this confidence that we have? How can we have it? The secret is, is that we know that God is near. That God is with us. The, no matter where we go, no matter what happens, God is always with us. Matter of fact, there's so many verses about this, and I'm just going to just shotgun them at you real quick. Look what uh, Isaiah 41.10 says. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fear has not been perfected in love. Psalm 34.4 says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and he delivered me of all my fears. We love singing that song here in church. Joshua 1 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. Listen, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God's presence, young man, young lady, is always with us. Next time you are in a season of fear, open up the Word of God, open up to the psalm, and be reminded that God is your refuge and strength that he is with you, that his presence is always with you. Amen? So what's the second thing that we should remember? Write this down as number two. Remember the power and the provision of God. Remember the power and the provision of God. Let's go back to the passage in verse four through seven. It says, there is a river whose streams may glad the city of God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall, be, she shall not be moved. God will help her with morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is your fortress. Wow. God's word speaks for itself, but let's break it down a little bit. What's going on in this moment? Because... The psalmist David has pictured this abundant and constant provision of a river for Jerusalem. But what you have to understand, this is significant because Jerusalem doesn't have a a river like this. It only has a couple of streams. And so what is this huge river that provides all these things for the city? The prophets, yet they, what they did is that they anticipated the day where the mighty river would flow through the temple itself. And you can see it in Ezekiel chapter 47. But what they were looking at was the future of what God would do for the nation of Israel. And so what the psalmist is doing here, he is remembering the God, God's power. He's remembering his provision. And when he remembers what God has done and in the past, can I tell you, it is confidence for the future. 
When you look at God's people and their story, so many times in in scripture, especially in the book of Judges, people would fall or they would turn to sin or to pagan worship and idols because they would forget who God is and what he had done. They would always, God would deliver them, they would live for the Lord, and then they started to live for themselves, and they would go into sin, then they would be captive, and then it was just this crazy sin cycle in their life. But I love it, when you remember God's power, and you remember God's provision, can I tell you, it begins to dismantle fear in your life. And and that's why he's saying, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. This is something that should encourage you, that God will always provide for you, that you shouldn't fear about, what, if, is there going to be food on my table? What's going to happen? I'm not, I'm not saying be lazy and you know, start to not quit your job because God's going to provide. No, we, have, we believe in God's sovereignty, but we also believe in our responsibility. All right, We believe that God is sovereign and he will provide and he is power, but we also have responsibility. But what this means is that we don't worry about tomorrow. How am I... How, how are we going to pay for this? How are we going to make it? God always comes through for his children, one way or another. And, 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 I, and I'm, I'm here to, to kind of also kind of remove a misconception for your life. Uh, a lot of people say, or I've heard people say, I've never skipped a meal in my life. I, that's not been the case for me. Growing up, and, and even when I remember I was living by myself as a young adult, there are times where it was ramen and noodles, right? Ramen and noodles, or there was time where it was nothing, It was a cup of water, but God always provided for me. God always provided for me. God took care of his kid, and God will take care of you. If you just, for one moment, think back. Think to how God has provided for your life. Think for that job, that conversation, that relationship. Think how God has provided for you physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, Man, it should give you confidence for the future. I can sit here and tell you story after story of all the times that God has provided for me, of the times that I've seen God's power in my life working in my midst and even working when I don't see it. Can I tell you, when I, when I have a moment of fear or when I'm scared about something or I'm uncertain about something, all I have to do is just remember the past and it'll give me confidence for the future. So maybe you're here today and you're thinking of a moment or you're going through a situation in your life where you're like, Lord, I don't see any rivers here. I just see little itty bitty streams and I don't see this. And so can I tell you, even though you don't see it, God is working and doing something in your life. Take your eyes off of the size of the waves in your life and put your eyes back on the one that created the ocean to begin with. Take your eyes of what is right in front of you and put your eyes back on the author and the perfecter of your faith. Sometimes why we just get dismantled ourselves by fear is because our eyes are only on the thing in front of us. Our eyes are like we have just blinders and all we can see is right in front of us. But man, we don't see what God is doing behind that wall, what God is doing behind that situation, what God has already done and he's already conquered. Can I tell you, put your eyes back on the author and the perfecter of your faith. Be reminded of God's power and provision in your life. And when you do this, can I tell you, it will dismantle fear in your life. So number one, remember that God is always with you, that he's near. Remember the presence of God in your life. Second, remember God's power and provision in your life. And third, or this down as number three, remember the providence of God in your life. Remember the providence of God in your life. Let's go to verse eight through 11. Look what it says and we'll finish here. It says, come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. And verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is Our fortress. Can we make some noise for God's word? Oh my gosh, I get goosebumps, I get fired up. 
And what this is teaching us is here is that even though there's all these things happening in life, we can have peace and faith and not fear because God is completely and utterly in control. He is the one that holds not only the stars in the universe, but he also has you in the palm of his hand. And scripture says, who can take you or snatch you from his hand? No one or nothing. And so when we remember the providence of God in our lives, we can have peace. We can know that he is with us. When we remember the power and his provision, man, can I tell you, it will dismantle fear in our lives. And we can be still and know that he is God. But I know when I say the word providence, maybe you've heard it before, but maybe it's never broken down. I want to read to you a definition of what is God's divine providence. And so let me read just word for word what what I got from here, all right? The divine providence is the governance of God by which he, with wisdom and love, cares for and directs all things in the universe. The doctrine of divine providence asserts that God is in complete control of some things, just your things, no, all things. He is sovereign over the universe as a whole, over the physical world, the affairs of the nations, human destiny, human success and failures, and the protection of his people. This doctrine stands in direct opposition to the idea that the universe is governed by chance or by fate. One of my favorite things to correct people in in the most loving and kind way is when they say, all right, good luck. Oh man, by chance. I always love saying, no, no, no. I don't believe in chance or luck. I believe in God's providence and sovereignty over my life. And when you start to think and and remember how God has sustained you in the past and every season of your life, Man, can I tell you, it'll make that situation, that fearful situation in your life, just look that little bit smaller, just a little bit smaller. So what I want to encourage all of God's people at all of our campuses or those watching online is that when you remember God's presence in your life, when you remember his power and his provision in your life, and when you remember his providence that he is in control of your life, can I tell you, remembering these things will dismantle fear in your life. In this world, you will have trouble. Jesus said this. There's going to be difficulties. There's going to be storms. In the day that we live in today, when you look at the world around us, when you look at the government, when you look at the social climate, when you look at climate change and all this stuff, can I tell you, it's going to get worse. Child of God, know and understand. Uh, Some of you don't understand what I'm saying, so you need to get your nose in the word of God. You need to understand, it's going to get worse. In this world, we're going to have trouble. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be persecution. But can I tell you, we can take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. We know the outcome. Even if the diagnosis is cancer, even the diagnosis is we're broke, even if the diagnosis is X, Y, Z, we can take heart and have courage because Jesus has overcome it all. Because whether in this life or in the next, when we are face to face with God, when we can be reminded of his faithfulness, but can I tell you, all tears will be wiped away. There will be no pain. There will be no sorrow. There will be no health critical conditions. We will be in glory with our Lord and co-heirs with Christ. Can I tell you, we don't have anything to fear. Be encouraged, young adult. Be encouraged, leader, child of God. Remember that God is always with you. Remember his power, his provision, and that he is in control. When you remember these things, you will not fear. Dismantle fear in your life. Walk in faith knowing that God holds you and the universe. Amen? I pray that you are encouraged by this. I pray that not only are you encouraged by this, but that you can use the word of God, Psalm 46, to be reminded of this encouragement, but also to encourage someone else. Maybe it's somebody in your family. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's a friend, someone in your small group. That the next time that we are navigating through fear in our life, through a situation, we can go back to Psalm 46 and be reminded that God is our refuge and strength. That we can be still and know that God is in control, that we can have peace because his presence is always with us. Amen? Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful for this time that we get to come together and that, Father, we get to worship you uh, through just the procl uh, proclamation of your word, that we get to open up your scriptures and, Father, that we get to hear of your promises that you will never leave us or forsake us. And the reason that also it's this promise, not only because you said it, but because also, Lord, it was completed and fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we're grateful that as children of God, you are a perfect heavenly Father and Lord, you will never let us down. You will always be right there with us. And understanding that you are with us, Lord, I pray that it would give us confidence, not tomorrow, but today, right now, in this very moment. If we are fearful over a situation, that we can be reminded that the creator of the world, of the universe, resides in us. That your presence is with us wherever we go. Lord, I pray that and some of us are, are dealing with a fearful situation or a, 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 a stinky one, Lord, I pray that we would be reminded that we serve an all-powerful God. You are omnipotent, Lord, and so where we are potent, you are omnipotent, Father. Where we are powerless, you are all-powerful. That, Lord, you've always provided for us and you will continue to do so. And, Lord, if we, again, I love to say, Lord, if we can trust you with forever and ever, if we can trust you with eternity, then, Lord, we can trust you here on earth. And so, Father, I pray for any young man, any young woman, any leader that may be struggling with fear right now in their lives, fear of tomorrow, fear of whatever it may be, that they would remind themselves of these three things, that you are with us, of your power, of your provision, and of your providence in our life. And, Lord, I pray for the young adult that maybe today they don't have your presence with them. They can't confidently say that they are your child. Lord, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation that today that they would confess that they are a sinner, that they have fallen short of the glory of God, and that they need a Savior. And the Savior is not doing good things, good works, is not giving money to the church, is not serving. Lord, the only thing, the only one that can save us is trusting Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior of our life. So Father, I pray that today that someone would be praying that right now in their hearts, that they would be trusting, that they would be confessing their sins to you and crying out to you and saying, I believe who you are, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you that you are with us. And we thank you, Lord, that we can live in faith because of who you are. We love you, Lord, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen, amen. Well, hey, young adults, we're so grateful for you. And if you made that prayer today, if you decided to follow Jesus, or if you want to have more information, or if you want to have help and in, in how to journey to walk with the Lord, can I tell you, please, if you're watching online, email us, reach out to us. Or if you're at one of our campuses, please talk to one of your leaders. We, our mission here at CF is to help you follow Jesus. All right? We love you guys. God bless you. And we'll see you all next week.